hello welcome welcome to day 310 of our bible in a year challenge my name is sandra i'm gonna be your host for today welcome we are committed to reading our bibles in a year with just less than 20 minutes daily read time yes you heard me right just less than 20 minutes daily read time please kindly go ahead right now subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on facebook on instagram and on tiktok at sandra boyo aruleba let's get started day 310 november 6th 2022 365 days bible reading old testament ezekiel 10 ezekiel 11 ezekiel 12 new testament hebrews 7 verse 11 to 28 Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 119, verse 169 to 176. Old Testament, NIV version, Ezekiel 10, verse 1 to 22. God's glory departs from the temple. I looked and I saw the likeness of a throne of lapis lazuli above the vault that was over the heads of the cherubim. The Lord said to the man clothed in linen, Go in among the wheels beneath the cherubim. Fill your hands with burning coals from among the cherubim and scatter them over the city. As I watched, he went in. Now the cherubim were standing on the south side of the temple when the man went in and a cloud filled the inner glory, inner court. Then the glory of the Lord arose from above the cherubim and moved to the threshold of the temple. The cloud filled the temple. And the court was filled, was full of the radiance of the glory of the Lord. The sound of the wings of the cherubim could be heard as far away as the outer court, like the voice of God Almighty when he speaks. When the Lord commanded the man in linen, take fire from among the wheels, from among the cherubim, the man went in and stood beside a wheel. Then one of the cherubim reached out his hand to the fire that was among them. He took up some of it and put it in the hands of the man in linen who took it and went out. Under the wings of the cherubim could be seen what looked like human hands. I looked and I saw beside the cherubim four wheels, one beside each of the cherubim. The wheels sparkled like topaz. As for their appearance, the four of them looked alike. Each was like a wheel intersecting a wheel. As they moved, they would Go in any one of any one of the four directions the cherubim faced. The wheels did not turn about as the cherubim went. The cherubim went in whatever direction the head faced without turning as they went. Their entire bodies, including their backs, their hands and their wings were completely full of eyes as were their four wheels. I heard the wheels being called the whirling wheels. Each of the cherubim had four faces. One face was that of a cherub, the second the face of a human being, the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. Then the cherubim rose upward. These were the living creatures I had seen by the Kebar River. When the cherubim moved, the wheels beside them moved, and when the cherubim spread their wings to rise from the ground, the wheels did not leave their sight. When the cherubim stood still, they also stood still. And when the cherubim rose, they rose with them, because the spirit of the living creatures was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from over the threshold of the temple and stopped above the cherubim. While I watched the cherubim spread their wings, and rose from the ground, and as they went, the wheels went with them. They stopped at the entrance of the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the Lord of, of the God of Israel was above them. These were the living creatures I had seen beneath the God of Israel by the Kebar River. And I realized that they were cherubim. Each had four faces and four wings, and under their wings was what looked like human hands. Their faces had the same appearance as those I had seen by the Kebar River. Each one went straight ahead. 
Ezekiel 11 verse 1 to 25. God showed judgment on Jerusalem. Then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the gate of the house of the Lord that faces east. There at the entrance of the gate were twenty-five men, and I saw among them Jan Zaniah, son of Azul, and Pelatiah, son of Benaiah, leaders of the people. The Lord said to me, Son of man, these are the men who are plotting evil and giving wicked advice in this city. They say, Haven't our houses been recently rebuilt? The city is a pot and we are the meat in it. Therefore prophesy against them, prophesy, son of man. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on me, and he told me to say, This is what the Lord says. This is what you are saying, you leaders in Israel. But I know what is going through your mind. You have killed many people in this city and fill its streets with the dead. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. The bodies you have thrown there are the meat, and this city is the port, but I will drive you out of it. You fear the sword, and the sword is what I will bring against you, declares the sovereign Lord. I will drive you out of the city and deliver you into the hands of the foreigners and inflict punishment on you. You will fall by the sword and I will execute judgment on you at the borders of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This city will not be a pot for you, nor will you be the meat in it. I will execute judgment on you at the borders of Israel, and you will know that I am the Lord. For you have not followed my decrees or kept my laws, but have conformed to the standards of the nations around you. Now, as I was prophesying, Pelatia, son of Beniah, died. Then I fell face down and cried out in a loud voice, Alas, sovereign Lord, will you completely destroy the remnant of Israel? The promise of Israel's return. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, the people of Jerusalem have said of your fellow exiles and all the other Israelites, they are far away from the Lord. This land was given to us as our possession. Therefore say, this is what the sovereign Lord says, although I sent them far away among the nations and scatter them among the countries yet for a while a little while i have been a sanctuary i have been a sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone therefore say this is what the sovereign lord says i will gather you from the nations and bring you back from the countries where you have been scattered and i will give you back the land of israel again they will return to it and remove all its vile images and detestable idols. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose hearts are devoted to their vile images and detestable idols, I will bring down on their own heads what they have done, declares the sovereign Lord. Then the cherubim with the wheels beside them spread their wings and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. The glory of the Lord went up from the city and stopped above the mountain east of it. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the exiles in Babylonia in the vision given by the Spirit of God. Then the vision I had seen went up from me, and I told the exiles everything the Lord had shown me. Ezekiel 12 verse 1 to 28. The exile symbolized. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, you are living among a rebellious people. They have eyes to see, but they do not see, and ears to hear, but do not hear, for they are a rebellious people. Therefore, son of man, pack your belongings for exile, and in the daytime, as they watch, set out and go from where you are to another place. Perhaps they will understand, though they are a rebellious people. During the daytime, while they watch, bring out your belongings packed for exile. Then, in the evening, when they are watching, go out like those who go into exile. While they watch, dig through the wall and take your belongings out there, out through it. 
put them on your shoulder as they are watching and carry them out at dusk. Cover your face so that you cannot see the land for I have made you a sign to the Israelites. So I did as I was commanded. During the day, I brought out my things packed for exile. Then in the evening, I dug through the wall with my hands. I took my belongings out at dusk, carrying them on my shoulders while they watched. In the morning, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, did not the Israelites that rebellious people ask you, what are you doing? Say to them, this is what the sovereign law says. This prophecy concerns the prince in Jerusalem and all the Israelites who are there. Say to them, I am assigned to you as I have done so it will be done to them. They will go into exile as captives. The prince among them will put his things on his shoulder at dusk and leave and a hole will be dug in the wall for him to go through. He will cover his face so that he cannot see the land. I will spread my net for him and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylonia, the land of the Chaldeans, but he will not see it. And there he will die. I will scatter to the winds all those around him, his staff and all his troops, and I will pursue them with drawn sword. They will know that I am the Lord when I disperse them among the nations and scatter them through the countries. But I will spare a few of them from the sword, famine and plague, so that in the nations where they go, they may acknowledge all their detestable practices. Then they will know that I am the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, tremble as you eat your food and shudder in fear as you drink your water. Say to the people of the land, this is what the sovereign Lord says about those living in Jerusalem and in the land of Israel. They will eat their food in anxiety and drink their water in despair, for their land will be stripped of everything in it because of the violence of all who live there. The inhabited lands will towns will be laid waste and the land will be desolate. Then you will know that I am the Lord. There will be no delay. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, what is this proverb you have in the land of Israel? The days go by and every mission comes to nothing. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am going to put an end to this proverb and they will no longer quote it in Israel. Say to them, the days are near when every vision will be fulfilled. For there will be no more false visions or flattering divinations among the people of Israel. But I, the Lord, will speak what I will and it shall be fulfilled without delay. For in your days, you rebellious people, I will fulfill whatever I say, declares the sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. The Israelites are saying, the vision he sees is for many years from now, and he prophesies about the distant future. Therefore say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. None of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say, I will Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the Sovereign Lord. New Testament NIV version, Hebrews 7 verse 11 to 28. Jesus like Melchizedek. If perfection could have been attained through the Levitical priesthood, and indeed the law given to the people established that priesthood, why was there still need for another priest to come, one in the other of Melchizedek, not in the other of Aaron? For when the priesthood is changed, the law must be changed also. He of whom these things are said belonged to a different tribe, and no one from that tribe has ever served at the altar. For it is clear that our Lord descended from Judah, and in regard to that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. And what we have said is even more clear if another priest like Melchizedek appears, one who has Become a priest not on the basis of a regulation as to his ancestry, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible life.
4, it is declared, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless, for the law made nothing perfect, and a better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. Hallelujah. And it was not without an oath. Others became priests without any oath, but he became a priest with an oath when God said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. Now there have been many of those priests. Since death prevented them from continuing in office, but because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood hallelujah therefore he is able to save completely those who come to god through him because he always lives to intercede for them amen such a high priest truly meets our need one who is holy blameless pure set apart from sinners exalted above the heavens unlike the other high priests he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people he sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself glory to god for the law appoints as high priest men in all their weakness but the oath which came after the law appointed the son who has been made perfect forever. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 119, verse 169 to 176. Tall, may my cry come before you, Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. May my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. May my lips overflow with praise, for you teach me your decrees. May my tongue sing of your word, for all your commands are righteous. May your hands be ready to help me, Lord, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, Lord, and your law gives me delight. Let me live that I may praise you, and may your laws sustain me. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, if you're here and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said this prayer, we are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you in your new walk of faith. Email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to go ahead right now. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not yet done so. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Please go ahead right now, copy the link, and share to your friends, family, and loved ones. Share to them on WhatsApp, on Facebook Messenger. Continue sharing. Let them know what the Lord is doing over here. Encourage them to join us as we together read our Bibles every single day with just less than 20 minutes daily read time. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.